I'm Monique Sultani, and I want you to join me on my journey. Let's go. With the purpose of bringing people together. My grandma, she used to say, whoop it. Whoop, whoop it. it. By breaking bread. This is where I have my pretty woman moment. Does this little spoon go for this sorbet? Opening up a bottle. It doesn't get much better than this, you know. And connecting through culture. We're grilling a lot. We're using like a lot of European techniques but with Mexican flavors. This, I'm just a little scared. See you on the other side. Is Wine O TV. <laughs> Halfway between LA and San Francisco, California's Central Coast is often referred to as real California. I think it's a perfect mixture of Southern California and Northern California. Free spirits, forward thinkers, and farmers at heart, we have found our way to a new frontier. Pass Robles is really on almost everybody's radar. El Paso de Robles, or Pass of the Oaks, has a rich history dating back to the 1700s. Today, visitors come for the award-winning wines, world-renowned restaurants, and eye-catching art. It's easy to see why downtown Paso was dubbed one of America's happiest cities. With 20 tasting rooms, pouring over 200 wines from all of Paso's 11 AVAs. Paso's also true to its roots and its maverick mentality that has turned this region into the home of some of the world's finest wines. Here, among the endless rows of grapevines, you'll find plenty of heart, a celebration of heritage, and a deep appreciation for the trailblazers who have made Paso Robles what it is today. Just off California's Highway 46, you'll find the home of the Paso Robles pioneer, the winemaking legend behind Eberly Winery, Gary Eberly. Hi, Gary. Nice to see you. Hey, how are you doing? So good to see you. I have to say this is one of the thrills of my career. I've read about you. I've heard about you. And you really did, you know, put Paso on the map. But you started as, as a football player, which I think was pretty interesting. Yeah, see, that's how I got to college. I got to go to uh, Penn State because I wanted to play under Joe Paterno. And he is still one of three mentors I've had in my life. You know, he and Robert Mondavi are two that you, you would know. Mr. Mondavi taught me a whole lot about how not to be a winemaker, but how to recognize that you're in the hospitality business. You're not just hawking wine. You have to make the very best wine you can. And one of the things he told me, and this was way back when, he said, you don't ever charge for tasting. He said, you know, Americans are such fair people that, you know, if you treat them right and you give them a product that is superior, they're gonna buy it. It's, it's worked for me, and every day I channel Mr. Mondavi in one way or another. Let's go back, though. How did you end up here? How did you go from football to winemaking? After Penn State, I had a little stint with the Detroit Lions, about 18 days in camp, but my knees wouldn't pass their physical. And then I tried to join the Marines, and they turned me down, again, for the same reason. So I decided to go to graduate school. I spent 11 years in uh, different colleges and collecting degrees. And people say, 11 years? Why were you in college for 11 years? I said, it's easy. Where well, they keep the cheerleaders. <laughs> and uh, I was down at Charity Hospital in New Orleans working on a doctorate in cellular genetics. Well, one of my professors on my committee, he and I both loved opera. And Herb and I would take a couple bottles of wine and we'd listen to an opera. Somewhere along the line, I said, you know what? Herb, you won. And I no longer want to be a geneticist, I want to be an alcoholic. And I transferred to UC Davis. Gary graduated from UC Davis with a PhD in enology and viticulture before settling into Paso Robles nearly 50 years ago. And I've been here ever since. Among his many firsts, the first documented planting of Syrah in the state of California and the first commercially produced 100% Syrah wine. I love red wine. I, I genuinely believe a wine's first responsibility is to be red. Each of his bottles bears the iconic boar logo, depicting the origin of the name Eberly, which means small boar in German, just like the one who greets every Eberly visitor. You rub its nose for good luck. Careful, it's very hot here in Paso, and that means so is the snout. You don't put lipstick on it, you don't drink water out of it, you rub it, you throw some money in, and they donate that money to children's charities at the end of the year. 
And if you see Gary on your visit, don't be afraid to say hello. There's no better wine enthusiast to meet on your trip to Eberly than Mr. Eberly himself. People say, when are you gonna retire? And I say, this is my retirement. As the founder of J. Lohr Vineyards and Winery, Jerry Lohr is an industry titan with a passion for wine he discovered at a young age. I grew up on a farm in South Dakota. You go to church every Sunday and they talked about vine and wine. And so I said to dad, what, what is all this vine and wine stuff? Dad said, well, it's something they grow in California. And so when I came to California to graduate school at Stanford, I went looking for Cabernet. I went to the best liquor store and I couldn't get any Cabernet. So it's been a lifelong passion to do really good Cabernet. And what drew you to Cabernet in the beginning? Is that what they were serving at the Cabernet? Catholic Church? Or no, 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 no. The complexity that can come with Cabernet is greater than any other wine I've found. When I came to California in 1958, it was just Napa. Then it became Napa and Sonoma. Now it's Napa, Sonoma, and Paso. This area is the third best source in California. And so here we are now in present day Paso. People really see this as a destination. It has tremendous promise because it's not as crowded. We have vineyards up here for a mile on the right hand side, a mile on out here. We have some vines up the hilltop. So we can take you for a tour and show you just many different things. This is a big enough area here. There's enough climate change, enough for soil change that that area over there, 10 miles west of us, is better for Rhones. This area is, is for Cabernet. So this is Bordeaux and that's Rhone. This, we call it pure Paso because all the grapes in these bottles come from Paso. What messaging would you like people to really understand about Paso when you come and you're looking for a certain type of wine? It has a diversity of soils and climates, microclimates. Microclimates, diversity right. of soils lending itself to a, a diversity of wines that are uh, well produced here in Paso, if I understand yes, you correctly. Yes, yes. This whole rolling plateau gives us a tremendous amount of soil diversity that you don't find in other valleys. Valleys have the soil right along the bottom. They have some slopes, but this undulation that we have here is, is really unique. Do you have a cheers or toast that you say? No, just I enjoy learning by listening to people by the questions they ask, maybe help them understand and, and think better. So that's been a kind of mission of an 85 year old man. So thank you very much. Cheers, thank, thank you for helping us understand uh, Paso better in your story. Coming up. Pick up your leg. Huh? Join me as I zip line over grapevines. Oh, uh, what do I do? When Wine O TV continues. We're at Finca Paso Robles. Come with me, let's check it out. I've got Chef Patrick here with me. What are we throwing on octopus, I guess? So we got some octopus I'm gonna put on the grill. Marinated in a little uh, paprika, olive oil, garlic. Each serving gets about two pieces. Two tentacles. If you had to sum up your concept here at Finca, what would it be? Baja style Mexican food. A little unique in that we're, we're grilling a lot. We're using like a lot of European techniques but with Mexican flavors. This is a father-son duo, so we're it gonna is. have your son, Diego. I'm gonna sit down with him, so I'm super excited, yeah. and this looks delicious. Thank Thanks, you, Jeff. thank you. Finca is literally the staple, or the fixture, or the centerpiece, if you will, of Paso's new market walk. Thank you. So, first of all, tell us about the inspiration for your dishes and what you have in front of us right now. We have a wood-grilled octopus, Spanish octopus, and we're accompanying it with a seasonal pickle. It's gonna be a little bit of arbol chili in there, so there is a bite of spice, pineapple, fennel, um, parsnip, and red onion. We have oysters here as well, a chipotle butter, and then we also have a Baja shrimp taco. And then what we're really known for is gonna be our wood grill steak taco on a flour tortilla. And then the drinks, we have a spicy margarita we call prickly toad, just kind of a funny, funky name. And then our classic three, two, one margarita. Well, we should first of all, I mean, I can't sit yeah. with a beautiful prickly margarita for yeah. too long. I'll take the spicy one. Yeah, I'm absolutely, fan. cheers. Oh my goodness, that is great. Really spicy. <laughs> yeah, there's a kick on there. <laughs> Yo! <clears throat> Finish with a little jalapeno foam. Tell me about the tortillas. We're actually using small flour tortillas on our steak and our shrimp, and that is actually an ode to my grandmother. She's from Sonora, and they're known for three things. A really hot desert, 
steak and great, delicious flour tortillas. The inspiration, how did you guys come about and how'd you end up here and really, the, like I said earlier, the centerpiece of the yeah. walk. I went to Cal Poly and just fell in love with the place. I think it's a perfect mixture, the central coast of Southern California and Northern California. People are so nice here and so I just didn't want to leave. My wife and I found jobs here. After a few years, I decided I wanted to pull my parents out of retirement and help me open a restaurant. I think the food scene has really been adapting in the last few years. And again, we're just happy to be a small part of it. Incredible, Diego. Thank you. Thank you so much. This food is wonderful. What a great experience. What a wonderful introduction for us to the Market Walk. My first time here, my first time experiencing the style of food, and I love it. We're at Margarita Adventures for a zip and sip or a thrill and swill, whatever you want to call it. This is one of the only places where you can actually zip line over the vines. I'm excited and I'm a little bit nervous. Let's go. Tell us about why you came up with a zip line tour and a little bit about your history, Carl. Once we get people out in the vineyard, there's a connection to the brand. Stick your uh, right leg in the silver strap and your left in the orange. This ranch is unique to Pastor Robles. It's one of the oldest continually operated cattle ranches. The vines that we see behind us were planted by the Robert Mondavi family in 1999. Mr. Mondavi would be amazed to see wine lovers and thrill seekers zip lining over his vines. This is all right. I can't, are you driving or not? I'm driving. You're driving, all right, let's go. Okay, so I'm scared. So we are standing at the top of Double Barrel right now. As you zip across the canyon, you'll be right over the top of the Cabernet. Oh, so we're I zipping would... over cab vines. Yep, okay, do I... we get cab at the end? <laughs> Nervous? I am scared, I'm, I'm scared. Are you ready? Are we going? Yeah, pick up your leg. Ah! <laughs> ah! Okay, robot to the rescue. Awesome, Carl, did we get a high five or oh, yeah. something? I feel like a maverick over here, <laughs> whoa. Okay, so I did the zip. Can I get my sip? Yes, you can. Deal, Deal. promise, we made it, yes! That was fun, but it was definitely out of my comfort zone. One more test of tenacity before I get to go to my safe space. So what you would normally do is you would take the suspension bridge to get to the zip line number one. And then you would do one, two, three, four, five. And at the end of five, you would end up with a beautiful wine tasting. But I've already done my zip. I am ready for my sip. As long as I can make it across this bridge, all will be well. What we're having here is uh, some Chardonnay. Thank you. This is delicious. Uh, cheers to you, Carl, to this excellent adventure. On our way to the Double Barrel, we saw this most incredible mountain range, and it matches your label, Ancient Peaks. And you were explaining to me about this mountain range and how it really does have an impact on the fruit. The San Lucia mountain ranges separates the inland valley from the coastal climate. It was the inspiration for um, our label, the Ancient Peaks. It's a 150 million year old mountain range and that blocks the marine air from the inland valleys. That creates a more interesting wine. I'd love it if we could talk a little bit more about Paso. Paso Robles is really on almost everybody's radar for producing quality wines at affordable prices. Cabernet is king in the marketplace. People, when they go out, they just naturally tend to drink cabs. It is our largest produced wine and this wine is priced at uh, $21 okay. and so very affordable. This was an incredible experience that you provide here for us today, but really for people, for wine lovers and thrill seekers. Here's to your health. Coming up, okay, here yes. comes the boozy, <laughs> boozy spa water. Conservation never tasted so good. Oh, I love it. When Wine O TV continues.
Good afternoon, Monique. Welcome to Robert Hall. My name is Keen Thompson, Managing Director here, and it's a pleasure to host you here. Well, the pleasure's all mine. I love it when a handsome man shows up with two glasses of cold, sparkling wine. I am so excited to try some more wines and get a taste of the good life here at Robert Hall. One of the things that I think is really incredible about producers here in Paso, but specifically Robert Hall Winery, is their commitment to the environment and sustainability. Sustainability is really a pillar of our company. It's really important. In order to grow for us, you've got to be sustainably certified as a grower. And then most recently, we've embarked on this amazing, exciting journey into regenerative farming. So farming uh, without pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, planting cover crops, applying compost, pulling carbon uh, out of the atmosphere, all in this notion to regenerate our land and remove carbon from the land. And then the social fairness standard uh, is a huge part of regenerative farming in terms of paying staff a living wage versus a minimum wage. I feel like there's sort of an elephant in the room here and I don't want to like ignore the elephant that is roaring so loudly, but it is the wind. It's one of our biggest assets, believe it or not, because what the wind does, it comes in from the coast, the temperature gap, and it cools down the temperatures, which slows the ripening and the development of the vine. So you get this long ripening period, which is great for quality. Is it too soon for me to pull a grape and taste it? You can pull a, you can pull a grape and taste it. It's a little green at the moment. This but... might be the smallest, littlest, teeniest, miniest grape I've ever tasted. It's June, teeny tiny little grape here. It will be acidic. At the acidic, not a lot of sugar in it at the moment. Okay. Had the grape from the vine. Where are we at? You're two years in. You got any in barrel we can try? We do. Awesome. Start I'm in. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. I'd like to introduce you to Amanda Gorta, our winemaker here for the last five years. Fantastic. Thank you. Now we're going to get a taste of the cab, which is in barrel from the regenerative vineyard. Now I'll put some in yours. One of the things I think it's neat is we're actually in the barrel room here at Robert Hall, but we're getting a barrel sample. This is actually an experience here at Robert Hall that consumers can come and do on their own or with you, or they can set it up, correct? Yeah, they can call the winery and we can set it up for them and they can come and see our, our really cool barrel room. Typically the wines will be younger. It's really interesting to taste them in their raw state before they would ever be filtered um, and bottled and aged basically. And another thing you guys do here is you do a really great paired culinary experience and I believe Kane is gonna allow me to partake in that. So Amanda, cheers. Thank you so much. <laughs> How lucky are we to have the paired culinary experience here at Robert Hall Winery in Paso. The idea is that we uh, pair the wines with local, sustainable, uh, organic, or regenerally farmed produce. So to start with, we've got our Chenin Blanc paired with a, a Moro Bay local uh, oyster, sterling, sustainably farmed a caviar with a little bit of cream fresh there as well. For the vegetarian side here, we've got a, a local Moro Bay avocado sorbet that is beautifully with crisp, bright Chenin Blanc. I would love to talk a little bit about the history of Robert Hall, your founder. He was a visionary, he had a dream. He was based out of Minnesota, traveled to France, fell in love with wine, came back saying, wow, I, I've got to do this. He purchased the land and then went about planting his dream, which was across 130 acres here. What a perfect ending to a wonderful day that we've had here today. I, I can't thank you enough. I'll raise my glass to the good life. Well earned. Cheers. Mm -hmm. One of the largest land preservationists on the planet is pioneering right here in Paso. Palter Ranch is home to over 2,700 acres with over 90% of it left untouched. One thing we know about the Swiss, when they make something, they make it very, very well from trains to watches to wine. I am so thrilled to be here at this beautiful pond at Halter Ranch Winery with the one and only Nicholas May. Nice to see you. How are you? I am fantastic. I'm so excited to try your sparkling. Tell me a little bit about it. We started producing this in 2015. It's a 100% Peak Pool Blanc. Very crisp, very refreshing. Peak Pool Blanc, which means lip stinger in French, is the same lesser known variety Rhone grape used to make the Halter Ranch Rosé. It's a white grape variety that contains a lot of acid. So in our warm climate, you generally don't find white grapes with a lot of acid. So we use a lot of it out here, both for our rosé and a little sparkling. 
Well, I gotta say, you opened that bottle with precision. <laughs> I was expecting bubbles uh, everywhere. It's so. supposed to be a whisper. A whisper. See that, people? It's not supposed to be a big pop. It's supposed to be a whisper. One of the things I love about Halter Ranch is your commitment to the planet and sustainability. We talk a little bit yeah. about the Swiss connection. You are owned by Swiss billionaire who has really committed his life to really help keeping the planet uh, in check and, and keeping it preserved for the future generations. Yeah, Hans Jörg fell in love with nature hiking in America as a young gentleman. He's dedicated much of his life to sustainability and the preservation of the environment. So he's launched the 30 by 30 in the effort to put 30% of the ocean under preservation by 2030. This property is kind of a microcosmic example of that. He bought the original 900 acres. We planted about 200, but the rest of it just stays oak woodlands. And we got wildlife running around here. There's coyote, deer, wild pig, elk, all sorts of things that use this property as their home. And we only work on what we have here and what we need to work on, which is the 200 acres of grapes, the 17 acres of organic olives, and then the 10 acres of walnuts. So it's really about just using what we have and then saving everything else. And no visit to Halter Ranch is complete without a tour of the vineyard all aboard the Halter Ranch Railroad. The train is gonna do a, a two and a half mile loop of the property. We're gonna head down our airstrip. And we're gonna pass by our ancestor tree, which is the largest coast live oak on record. And it's just a beautiful tour of the property. I'll drink to that. How do you say cheers in, uh, in Swiss? I think it's something like prost. Okay, something like prost. Prost, prost, <laughs> tomato, tomato. Cheers. Cheers. I mean prost. <laughs> We're on the west side of Paso to introduce you to an industry innovator with a clear mission. Welcome to Refine Distillery. That's re colon find. I want to ask you the hardest question of the day. What does refined mean? Oh, it's actually literally what we do here. We found a use for something that wasn't being used and we recycled it or refined it into craft spirits. So it's find, re, colon, like recycle, found to use, repurpose. And this is wine runoff, correct? Correct. Tell us a little bit correct. more about that. Well, my husband and I started a winery here in Paso Robles in 1993. What was happening for our little winery and a lot of boutique wineries here in the area is that they do a process where when they bring the grapes in from the vineyard, the first thing they do is crush the grapes and the free run juice comes out. It's at that point that a lot of the smaller wineries will actually take a percentage of that free run juice out of the bin before they start fermentation. Because if you have more skin, less juice, you'll get a more concentrated wine. That process of extracting the juice leaves you with an excess juice. That's the juice that Refine's taking and refined it into spirits. Once we figured out that vodka can be distilled from anything that has starch or sugar, then that's when we said, bing, ding, ding, this is what we're gonna do. And that's when Refined was launched back in, in 2011. In the 2021 harvest, we were able to reclaim the equivalent of a 70 acre vineyard from being discarded because we don't just take the fruit from our vineyard, we buy from about 25 other vineyards here in Paso Robles. We also work with the local farmers for our flavorings. We're farmers first, and so that's what it's all tied into. And it all leads to unique spirits like Refined's Cucumber Flavored Vodka. I like to liken it to the boozy spa water. Like I feel a like boozy I have, spa water. You know, like have a massage right now. Okay, you know, but cue the masseuse. Okay, here yeah, comes the boozy, the boozy <laughs> spa water. <laughs> You really can taste the cucumber and it really, I, that boozy spa water like nailed it uh -huh. on the head. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, it's five o'clock somewhere, right? Time for some refined cocktails. We're going to do a cucumber mojito. So I okay. like to, instead of using rum for my mojitos, I like to use the cucumber vodka because it's, it's very cool, um, very refreshing. So what you're going to do is to take some of that mint and put it into the shaker. Okay. Three ounces of cucumber flavored vodka. I juiced the limes this morning, so okay. we didn't have to do that now. So well, we're going to go you. with an ounce and a half of fresh lime juice. Okay. And then the last ingredient is this honey simple syrup, then an ounce and a half of that as well. Add ice, give it a few good shakes, pour, top with club soda, stir, garnish with fresh mint, and enjoy. Oh, I love it. It's fancy, boozy spa water with mint. <laughs> mint exactly. <laughs> Which is even boozier spa water on and that. And zest. <laughs> Do you have a cheers or anything you guys say? My grandma. What does your grandma say? Here we go. Here it comes. <laughs> she used to say, whoop it. 
Look, there I knew it was something. <laughs> Whoop it! <laughs> Thank you for joining the journey to Paso Robles, California, and for watching Wine O TV, where we get to the heart of every wine region. We'll see you next time, but until then, remember, woof it. Whoa! <laughs> okay, little wobbly. I haven't even had my wine yet. I almost think like Michael's doing it on purpose. I'm not sure. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> Ah. You know, the guys down there I got it. It came right back at me. I guess you're old enough. I was going to say oh. sometimes. Oh, Jerry. So sometimes. So. Would you like to see my ID? No, no, no. no. <laughs>